Hello and welcome to episode 57 of Let's Run Facebook as a podcast with me, Nick Boddington. This week, I'm going to be explaining the difference between Facebook lead gen forms through their own platform or lead gen through landing pages when someone leaves the Facebook platform. Um, you've probably heard of both, and we're going to be discussing which one to use when and the difference between the two. But if you are interested in running Facebook ads and you're running them and they're not running too well and you can't get them to convert and the traffic's not right and you listen to this podcast, but you just can't get things working the way you want to, then you need to come and check out the ads clinic. Here you can jump onto a 30 minute call with me where we'll look at your ads, see what's going wrong and see if we can fix them there and then. And if you want to, you can come on and have a call with me at a cost, I'm afraid, every week or bi-weekly where we can actually run your ads together and get you to where you need to go. Just visit theadsclinic.com where you can access my calendar, input your details, and we can schedule a call. Now let's get straight into this podcast. Okay, so lead forms, lead gen, getting information from these people on Facebook so you can sell your products or service to them. There are two different ways to run this. And let me explain the difference. One, when you go to create an ad in Facebook in your ads manager, you will see something called lead generation. This is in the consideration area. So you have awareness, consideration, and conversions. In that lead generation allows you to basically run a ad where you want to get someone to um, download something or inquire for your service, whatever it might be, you're wanting that person to fill in a form. Now, there's two ways, that, well, there's two reasons why this is great. You, the user doesn't have to leave Facebook. You don't have to build a landing page, but there's two, you know, there's different ways you need to look at this and it comes down to quality or quantity. So one way, as I've just said, is to build a form in Facebook. And in that form, you can collect the details of that person. You can also ask a few questions. The person sees your ad on Facebook, they click submit, or well, they click um, the button, and that opens up a form that then gets pre-filled by that by Facebook because that person is a Facebook user. And then they could submit it, whether you ask questions or not, or whether you want them to have to answer those questions. That then gets, you can download it in an Excel spreadsheet or with a little bit more details, you can have it through API, go to CRM or go to a Google sheet or something like that. The second way of doing it is you run a conversion ad and in that conversion ad, when they click book now, it takes them out of Facebook into the URL where your, your landing pages on your or your website, where you have your landing page or your website detailing what they're going to get for this, whether it's a download or whatever. They fill in their details, submit, and that obviously either books a call, books a lead, or books or gets a download. Two different ways. So we've got the out, out of Facebook lead generation, or we've got in Facebook lead generation, both doing the same thing. Now, when to use this? The way that we look at this is the more, the, the more simple you make the process, i.e. you're using on Facebook, the less the quality is. So think of it from your point of view. Okay, so we, we all do this sort of stuff. We're all looking online for things that interest us. There's you know, if you're being targeted well in your industry or whatever, there's going to be things that you want in information, ebooks, cheat sheets, whatever it might be, especially if you listen to this podcast, you've probably downloaded some cheat sheets on Facebook marketing. You've probably bought some courses. You know what I'm talking about when we're talking about lead gen. Now, a lot of those times, those cheat sheets, et cetera, will be on landing pages set up by that company or that or that entrepreneur or that expert. You've seen the ad on Facebook or LinkedIn or on, uh, sorry, Facebook or Instagram. You've gone through, you've gone to the landing page, you've put in the details and you submitted the form. Then if they're any good at what they're doing, you're then going to get emails, you're going to get retargeting, et cetera, et cetera. So they, they're trying to nurture you. That's the best, that, as far as I see it, that is the best way to do it. Simply because you're going to get a higher quality lead coming through because that person has seen your ad They've clicked the ad. They've gone through to the, your landing page. They've actually left Facebook. Well, actually in the Facebook world now, they haven't actually left Facebook. To help with Facebook tracking, you're actually still sitting within Facebook. 
um, you're not actually leaving it, which is a great thing. So don't, don't worry about that. It helps with all our tracking. But as far as we're concerned as a user, we've now left Facebook and we're on the page where we've, the destination page of where, where we think we're going to go. We're now submitting your details or we're reading up on it, or it might be a long copy page where we're actually scrolling down quite a few times. The expert or the business is trying to give as much information on, on what we might get, because at the end of the day, what is the value of your email address and personal details going to that expert? Okay, so you might see ones where it is, hey, download this now. And they'll have a great hook, which is um, get this, get this now and make a million pounds. I don't know what it will be, but let's say it's a great hook and you're going to press that download for that cheat sheet straight away after putting your email address and your telephone number, whatever information, usually your email address. That come, goes down, but you've, you've, you've gone through a few different tra transitions to get to that point which means that you're a better quality lead for that company or expert because you've had to go through these transitions to get there. When you do it on Facebook, Facebook have made it really, really easy for that, for that user. Let's say, again, you're seeing the same expert who's got a cheat sheet, but it's on Facebook. And your, your details are in Facebook are, are filling in that information. Now, do you even remember what email address you've used? Is it Have you had your Facebook account for the last 15 years and it's an email address you don't even use anymore? So if Facebook has still got that email address in its system, it's pre-filled that form with it. You can't be bothered to, to change it if you think that's oh, an odd email address. Either way, you know that you're going to submit those details and you're going to be able to download the form. The problem is the person at the other end who has used that isn't getting good quality leads coming through because Facebook has made it so easy that mistakes can happen. Plus, I mean, I've seen it, we've seen it so many times before where we're sending these leads over to a particular client and, you know, people, people are saying, you know, they've rung them back within three minutes of that lead coming through and saying, oh, I didn't put, I didn't put that for people actually don't even realize they've done it. It's that easy. They don't even realize they've done it. And this is really obvious for things like, personal training or chiropractors, all these different small localized businesses who want to use the Facebook lead generation form. So they're just marketing to a local 10, 20 mile radius. Let's say it's a personal trainer, 10 mile radius or a gym or something like that. And they're using the lead gen form because you know they're a one man band. They haven't got the resources to build landing pages and websites and things like that. So they've taken the lead generation of, you know, logically, I can put an ad out really simply. I can choose the lead generation objective. And at that point, um, someone can have their details pre-filled and I get it. And I've seen it before, you know, um, personal trainers that we've had as clients back ages ago um, will be getting like eight leads through a day. And they, at the beginning, they're inundated with it. It's brilliant. But then when they call them, no one's answering the phone. No one's returning to their email addresses. So at first, with lead gen especially, is... We all get very, very excited. We have to manage our clients' expectations with this as well. Only this morning, we we're on a call with a client who is already sending people to a landing page on the website, and it's growing fine. They're wanting the lead cost to come down. Now, in time, it will. We've only just started in December. We've only gone through, we've gone through a really expensive time of marketing. It's going to get better. But they're, they want to try out the lead form page, and that's absolutely fine. We'll do that for them. But what we've explained to them is, okay, the lead form page is going to get a lot a quantity is aspect, a quantity and your cost per lead is going to come down opposed to the uh, landing page where you're going to get less, but the quality is going to be higher. So it's fine if you can, you can run both sides as long as you can manage the expectations of yourself or your clients and have a bit of everything coming through. The other, the, the one way you can stop this with the on Facebook lead forms is that you can ask questions. So rather than, yes, the form gets pre-filled, but then you can actually ask some questions. So let's say you're, let's say you're in a B2B company. Let's say, I don't know, let's say you're a, a fuel card company, for instance. Okay, it might be a bad example, but, let's, but it, it helps the questions. So you're a fuel card company. So the only people you really want to speak to are people that are going to have a fleet of cars. So let's say it's a, a sales office and it's got 10 employees and five of them are salespeople on the road, okay? Selling printers, yeah? Now, the company is going to cover their fuel costs. So they're going to get a fuel card. 
But to the fuel card company that's that's put the ad out, they want to know that they only want to deal with companies that have got five people on the road or above. Ideally, they want 25 people, 50 people on the road because it's more fuel cars they can sell to one company. So rather than just saying, hey, we're a fuel car company and you can get fuel cards and this is the, the you know, you're only going to pay a pound per litre or whatever. And then that's auto fuel and they get a load of rubbish coming through of one man bands and it's a waste of time and blah, blah. You start putting questions in there like how many how many fleets do you run? Uh, sorry, how many cars are in your fleet or vans or trucks? Six. Okay, are you the fleet decision maker? Yes. And you can start asking questions about it. So rather than just getting someone who can really easily fill in that form or it's pre-filled and press submit and getting some rubbish through, start asking pre-filled questions, which means that that user isn't going to be as crap because they're starting to have to fill out questions. So if they, if you have three or four or five questions in there and that person has to fill out those questions before they press submit, you're then going to get a higher quality person coming through. That being said, you can still ask those questions on your landing page as well. So if you're more advanced and you have built a landing pages, landing page, click funnels, lead pages, things like this are brilliant for this sort of thing. You can actually ask these questions on those pages as well. So the more information you get coming through, especially if you're in those sort of industries, the more questions being answered are going to help you or your salespeople actually determine who is better, what the better leads are, who's going to get called first, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a really good way of understanding who's coming through. And it might be that you start backing off from five questions. It might be that you'd start working down to four, to three, to two, until you find that sweet spot of who you're bringing through as a lead. So in conclusion to this podcast, that is when I hope, I hope I've explained that right. So we have two things, Facebook on Facebook lead generation, and then using conversions objective, ob objective for leads to come out of Facebook to a landing page, ask the same sort of questions, use the same sort of setup. Just be wary that if it comes from Facebook, it's a lot easier for that user to be rubbish, to, fill, to, to not fill any information in and just do it. And, you know, it's all very exciting in the beginning when you've got loads of leads coming through. But if you can't get hold of anyone, you soon lose momentum with it. You'd be much better getting high quality leads coming through. So you can use both areas, use what's, you know, use what's right for your resources in both areas. But think about how you set these up rather than rushing into it and getting inundated with leads coming through that aren't good quality. I hope that helps. I hope you that understands, uh, makes you understand the difference between the two. Any questions, go on to um, our Facebook group, which is Let's Run Facebook Ads. Add a question on there and we'll answer it when we see it. Hope that helps and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. <laughs>